Alright, what's up? What's going on guys? Captain Monk here in today's game playing some Jin 80 carry on the PvE. So let's go out here and grab ourselves the Doran's Blade, one health potion, and the Warren Chicken to head onto the lane. But yeah guys, we're playing some Jin here today, who's actually the newest champions of League of Legends, and he is extremely fun so far. I've played two games of him because I wanted to get a bit of a grasp of the champion before I played him. So of course, going into this game, guys, I might make some mistakes. I'm definitely not I'm definitely far from perfect, but I think I at least have a general grasp on the champion, whereas my first game, I mean, I still did pretty well. I had a damn good scoreline because it is the PBE and these games are really unbalanced. But with that said, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. I didn't know how my E worked, for example, the entire match, and I still managed to get really fed. So although it's a good scoreline and a pretty exciting game, it didn't really meet, I guess, the uh, requirements I like to have as far as my knowledge of the champion. So again, I don't know the entire champion inside and out, but I think I got a good enough grasp. So to give you a quick rundown, uh, Jin, in general does not use attack speed in any of his uh, stats. It's kind of weird. Like his attack speed right here that you see here, that will increase with levels, like your base attack speed. And so you have four shots, kind of like the new Graves rework, which allows you... I'm just trying to move away, by the way, because these guys are spamming emotes. Super loud and annoying. But, uh, but yeah, it's so like you still use attack speed a little bit, but you can't build it. and You can't get it in your runes or masters like that. Like it's just going to come straight out of your, um, your base stat. However, any bonus um, extra... Attack speed you build will actually boost your AD. As you can see there, the red number, you see that 1% there, that actually increases your AD by a little bit. So as you build attack speed items, you'll actually increase your AD. So gins are really, nor like a really common thing is to hit like 500 AD with this champion. It's very common. It's not like where other AD carries, you hit like 350, 360, 370, and that's like capped, like as high as you'll normally see. No, with Jin, you hit a lot higher than that. And whoa, that was a definite like spike there. Trade some damage back, but I think because Janus Shield, we might have lost on that one. But that was really strange. Like, I glitched the side there. Maybe I was just... Maybe I just completely lost track of my chain of thought, and the next thing you know, I show up somewhere else. But, yeah, I'm not really sure. Let's go and get Oats Ward here, though. Do some damage to Janna. She's getting really far up and up, um, reloading. <laughs> I'm still not completely used to this whole reloading thing, because I know it's very similar to Graves, and I know a lot of people are going to say that. You know, it's the same as Graves. Just think about Graves. Well, here's the thing. I haven't played Graves a whole lot on the change. To add on to that, Graves' reload time is actually a lot quicker than Jin's, because Jin has four shots, whereas Graves has two, and Graves' shots can be reloaded at any point in time. So if you were to shoot once and then just stand there for a while, you'll actually reload that first shot. Whereas with Jin, you need to shoot all four, except if you spent like a ton of time out of combat. Like I'm talking a large amount of time. It's maybe like 15, 20, maybe 30 seconds plus. It's a lot of time out of combat between shots if you want to just reload uh, out of the blue. You can't. You have to fire all four shots in most cases, and that's what causes some issues. And they kind of, I think they left it in there because they want to make sure you utilized that fourth shot because the fourth shot is always a crit. And that segues into the next thing. Jin does use crit, but his crit damage is lowered, kind of like Yasuo. So if you just build crit, your your first three attacks of those purple ones you guys can see, they are normally a different color, but they're purple on colorblind mode. Which I'm actually not colorblind. I just find it much more easy to look at. Which is probably the purpose behind it in the first place, so the colorblind people can look at it without any problems. But yeah, the waves getting pushed towards us here, so we're just gonna hang out. But I'll talk about the other abilities in a second here. But uh, so yeah, essentially the last shot, the last shot's always gonna crit and do full crit damage, which is really great. Actually, maybe it does more. I'm not sure. It either does full crit damage or normal crit damage, or maybe a bit extra. I'm not sure. But if you get crit with, ooh, hold on, I thought that bubble hit. But if you get some crits off with other things, it's not gonna do the same amount of damage. So like these shots here, if they crit, would not do the same amount of damage. And can I get that last shot off onto Janna? I can. There we go. There's one kill. Put this in behind this guy to hopefully... Ah, never mind. I was trying to put my trap behind him there, but it wasn't quite going off the way I planned. I guess I was out of range when I was casting it, and then I moved forward into other things. But still, not too bad of a start for us, because Janna just got way too aggressive there, and we had to take her out. And I'll explain it, you know, later on, how these abilities all work, and how I kind of did what I did. And hold on. Wait, there was a Rengar there. I thought that was our Rengar, because it's a Rengar mirror match, so I thought that was ours. Whoopsies. Definitely a mistake by me. I did not realize that was theirs. That's okay. So yeah, if you build crit with this guy, you'll be able to crit with your first three auto attacks. Your fourth one will always crit though. And the crit damage on that will not change unless you, of course, get Infinity Edge, in which case it will. And that will make it even stronger. And also, uh, like I said earlier, if you get a crit with your first three auto attacks, they are weaker. Nice Fizz Roam, by the way, coming in there. But if you get Infinity Edge, they'll become as, as powerful as they should be, which is 200%, of course, instead of 150% damage. So... Hopefully that gives you a bit of insight onto how this all works. Jen is back to lane here, and I know I should be pushing in to try to make Jen miss minions, but I kind of want to stick around and kill these guys again, because honestly, we're that much better of a players than these guys are. They're making enough mistakes that I think we might be okay. So we'll see. We can see here, two and a half seconds, you have to reload. It's a long-ass reload time. So my best suggestion for um, at least training lane, team fighting, whatever, 
a piece of advice that I found useful, and I don't really know if it entirely works, but I think it does, is use your first four shots, and whenever you're using those four shots, or when you're reloading those shots, I should, I should say, uh, make sure to make a point of using your spells, because during that time, you can't, you can use your spells still, right? You can't use your auto attacks, but you can still use your other sh your spells, so may, to, may as well utilize those, and I think while you're using your spells, you can still continue reloading simultaneously, so that allows you to just be more time efficient as far as your damage output goes. Now, as far as the Q goes, uh, it's pretty much Katarina's Bouncing Blade. The only real difference, of course, is that it's not the same name, different visual effect, and the fact that if it last hits something uh, on any of the bounces, it will increase the damage on the, uh, on the following bounce by 35%. So if you last hit a bunch of things like I'm going to right here, you can see it actually has a ton of damage on that last hit to Janna. So that's a good example of a good way to use that. I'm just going to snipe this guy over here. Uh, their W is kind of like Lucian's piercing light as far as speed goes and all that, except for it doesn't pierce things. It only pierces minions. If it hits a champion, it stops that champion, and, and that's that. But uh, there's an important thing to keep in mind, though, is that your auto attacks, once you have your W available, is has a passive effect that it will mark the champion. And so if you hit the mark on them like that, you see that circle thing, and then you hit the W like this, it will root them. So it's important to keep in mind as well. And Jaina's getting really low on mana here, so maybe we could do some damage to her. Nice crit coming in as well. I'm a little bit worried, though, but... Ooh, he actually got us. I didn't think he was going to get us there. Can Nami finish the deal? I mean, those auto attacks are going to do some damage, but who knows if it's enough? It's not going to be enough. All right, so they're going to trade back. So I guess that's what we get for being cocky and sticking around. And he got with a Brawler's Glove first. That is very unorthodox. All right, well, that's going to give us a bit of an edge, actually, because he went with a better item, like a, an extra Doran's Blade or uh, you know, a Longsword. Anything else would have been much better for him. Because like I said, you do crit with Jin. It's not like you don't. But his crits are going to do 150% damage. You can kind of see that towards the bottom there. It says crits deal reduce damage 150%. And, of course, when you do hit a crit, you get extra move speed, which actually helps out a ton because it means every fourth shot of yours is going to make you get, get fast. And if you just get a normal crit from other things, you still get that move speed, which does scale as well with your attack speed. So move speed gets stronger with your attack speed. So does your AD. Your AD gets stronger with your crit chance. And uh, I think that's about it for crit chance, actually, because it's already damage as is because it's a crit. <laughs> Because, yeah, you don't use attack speed at all, so it needs some reason to build it. Because otherwise, you just be building a bunch of AD items. So this way, you build a bit of AD and a bit of AP item. Or not AP. A bit of attack speed, a bit of AD items, but you just get a ton of AD. It's kind of weird, but that's basically what it comes up to, what it sums up to. So let's get these minions here. And, of course, as you can see, when you get that fourth shot, your character goes all colorful. Like he's in the disco, dance with his gun. And then you get that next shot. It's always crits for a lot of damage. Which is awesome. I love it. As far as itemization goes, by the way, guys, I should probably mention this. I'm going to be going with the Essence Reaver. Some people like the Infinity Edge first. I personally do not care for it because you still only get uh, one in four shots out of the three to um, crit because you only have 25% crit. Or is it 20% crit? It's one of the two. So it's not very often. And, of course, you're... Well, hold on. We have Rengar coming in. I'm just going to try and lead my trap if I can. All right. That guy's going down. Can we get the Janna as well? Ooh, she juked that. All right. That's good. Um... One thing you'll notice a very, as a very big trend with me is I'm very bad with the traps. Honestly, I think the best use of them is to peel yourself and just get awareness of your opponents because they'll proc as soon as someone walks over them. If you have them set up for a little bit, kind of like Jinx traps, take some time to really set up. And once they're on top of them, of course, they'll slow them for two seconds. And then if they stay inside the AoE, it does actually a giant nuke of damage. You can see there, 15 plus like 185. It's a massive amount of damage. But most players are smart enough to actually walk out of it. So... I don't really consider that a, da a reliable damage source. And I'm just going to try and cut this guy out here. Doing what we can to do so. Come on. Please? Ah, that's fine. I got a plan here. Ah, I missed. Come on. Use the ult. Alright, Fizz can get that one. Never mind. <laughs> Alright. Well, you got to see some ultimate footage at least. Although I missed most of my shots because I'm really bad with it. At least you got to see it. And that's something that counts. And I'm just going to try and shove this in and make... It so we can help Fizz. Never mind, Fizz has got this under control. Nice job. All right, let's tear it out. But yeah, so that's the W. I mentioned that earlier. At least it's just it hits minions. Does reduce damage to minions, by the way. So kind of like Piercing Light was on Lucian when it first came out, and now it does full damage. So yeah, you can clear minion waves like this. But you can see it has very little damage to them. But if you hit a champion, it will stop. And if you already auto attack them prior, it will root them up. I'm not sure whether it's only your auto attacks, though. It might be your teammates, too. I don't know for sure. Because I, re I read somewhere that you, your, your teammates could auto attack them first, and then you could W them, and they'll get rooted. So, yeah, if Deadly Flourish takes a champion, it's been hit with one of his... By one of... Oh, it has to be Jin's. Okay, yeah, it has to be Jin's basic attacks. Oh, no, hold on. Lotus Traps or allies. 
or allies within the last four seconds. So yeah, an allies auto attack actually does work, which is see, like right there. For example, I didn't auto attack Janna, but she got rooted up a little bit. So that's actually pretty cool. So, yeah, very, very helpful there as far as kiting goes, because you just pop that and then kite people out from there. And whoopsies, my attacks weren't available when I wanted to. Another reason why I'm getting the essence here, by the way, is because as you can see, with my natural use of my abilities, I'm just getting really low mana consistently. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's really good. Not to mention, you're always getting that fourth crit, which does work with Essence Fever to replenish mana. So that combination of just interactions, I think, is very, very good for getting the Essence Fever over the Infinity Edge. Because, again, like the Infinity Edge is going to increase your damage, no doubt about it. But is it an efficient damage boost? I don't know. Probably not as far as gold cost goes. So let's go ahead and get these items here. Get an extra potion. And we'll just boogie on back. Uh, looks like our pink ward took some damage, but Fizz is actually bottom lane to defend it. And yeah, our team's really freaking funky, man. We've got... Our Rengar jungle is pretty standard, but we have the Fizz with TP, but he's mid? Roaming down? I don't, I don't know. And Akali, top, if not mid. I don't know. I wasn't really watching the lane phase. I was more focused on myself, which is kind of obvious right now, I guess. But anyways, Fizz going ham, though. What's he going to do? I mean, he does? No, he doesn't have his ult. I thought he did. All right, well, he's going to have to flash out, actually, so that's going to suck for him. But hey... I wonder if, I wonder if. Ah, Jan took one shot. Can we get this last one on him? Yeah, all right, didn't quite kill him though. The thing is with Jin's ultimate to keep in mind as well is that the last shot will crit just like your your uh, four auto attacks. So if you hit the last shot on somebody, chances are they're going down. Now let's go ahead and finish off Janna there. And can I help this guy out? I cannot, but I got the assist still. So I think Rengar's going for Fizz. That's what I'd be doing if I was him. But no, he's going for us, okay. And the exhaust coming out, nice. Having to reload, but that's okay. Actually, Shen's here, but Shen's... What the heck was that build? <laughs> Last shot crit. All right, see you later. Can Rengar walk into that? He is not going to walk into it. He stayed to the side. All right, we'll finish off the turret then. I'm going to get bullied up here a little bit, but that's okay. But as far as the E goes, I kind of explained it a little bit, but essentially all it, all it is is it's a trap you place down that takes some time to set up. Once it's set up, if an opponent walks over it, even minions too, it will slow the targets in the area, which the AoE is actually pretty big, as you can see. Uh, the smaller circle inside the big one, of course. The big one being the range at which you can place it. Um, and from there, it will actually explode after those two seconds that it's slowing people, which is pretty damn strong. But at the same time, it's like, who's stupid enough to stand on top of that? The only time I see that the damage component being really good is if they're already on top of some sort of CC. Otherwise, I think it's a lot better uh, in some sort of a sieging situation or like a team fight where you're trying to like hold on dragon like hypothetically let's say our team's all around dragon right here and we're all setting up we get like traps here here and all over the place and if we ever get a team fight going and they're on top of that trap then boom we just we go and that edge that the traps provide us and damage is just gonna literally decide to fight but again it's a very situational spell and that's why max it last but here's a nice fight going on and they actually they stood on top of it so this is a good example of a great time to use it because they walked into that stuff and there's gonna be the one kill going off i'm gonna place this trap behind us just because I think that's a good spot. Now, where did their Jin go? Because if I see him, I could snipe him out. Because I am Jin, the sniper. Of course, it is a mirror match, though. Because we're on the PB, you guys. When you're on the PB, you gotta expect this. And you can kind of tell I'm on the PB from my name. Not to mention just the skill, the quality of players in this as well. And take some damage, son. Ooh, there it is. The damage from my W was enough. Not to mention, of course, that I already had my uh, passive on him for my W. So, Or not my passive, but like the W... A mark on him that allowed me to snare him up. So even if I didn't kill him, I was going to get him with an auto attack anyways. So here we go. Essence Reaver, our first item. Let's see here. Let's go in towards the Rapid Fire Cannon next. So again, the attack speed on this will not buff our attack speed as you can see. However, the attack speed we get from this is going to buff our attack damage because of that red number you can see there. That 9%. To add on to this, the crit from it is going to increase our attack damage by a little bit. That, six, that orange number there, the 16%. And of course, last but not least, it does make it so that we have some crit chance to work with, with our Essence Reaver. So we have more CDR, and we also have the luxury that is crit, so we can crit with everything except for, or not except for, we can crit with all of our attacks alongside our fourth shot. Of course, that's not going to happen because it's only 10% crit, but it can happen that we can crit with any of those auto attacks at some point. So that's awesome. So let's go ahead and just take the red buff here, may as well. No one else is around, and it actually helps me a lot, so why, why not? I will, of course, take some damage from it because I don't have any lifesteal yet, but that's not a big deal. Uh, speaking of lifesteal, lifesteal is a great stat with Jin because lifesteal items like Bloodthirst give you a ton of AD, and that's just great for the scaling that this champion provides. But at the same time, I wouldn't prioritize it over other items because you're more of a ranged champion that should be sitting back and never taking damage, and that was an awful W. I should leave. Let me just slow it up here. I should be able to walk out, actually. No, I got a flash. 
Yeah, I was in a bad spot. Nami wasn't with me. I could have fought that, of course, but there's no way I could have won that 2v1. I'm not that fed just yet. I just don't want to risk anything like that, so I'll use the investment of my flash. It's, you know, it's not good, but it's not the worst thing that could have happened out of that. And I'll take that. Better safe than sorry, right? And we actually have a flank coming in from Fizz. I'm going to go ahead and just try and pursue the fight. It's looking like he should be fine to take out... Oh, hold on. That was actually a really good Fizz ult. There we go. Fizz is going to get the double kill. He deserves it. He made a really good play there. Flanking their team like that. Alright, we'll get these minions here. Uh, one thing I also mentioned that I think is kind of obvious at this point, but I still want to mention a little bit because we're not really talking about much as of now, is, uh, of course... I'm not doing that whole 200k special right now. That does not mean it's not happening. I mentioned this in my Jax video that I was doing a 200k special as my next video. And I did hit 200k. It's not like I didn't, which is awesome, by the way. Thank you guys for that. But I'll make a more formal thank you in the video itself. The reason I'm not doing a video of it just yet is because the new Wukong skin is not on live servers yet. And without that skin, a big part of the video that I wanted to do isn't there. So that's hopefully should explain it. And I can't get my attack on him. Damn it. All right, he's probably going to try and alt me here. I'm just going to try to stay on this thing, because that way it takes extra damage. Ah, I couldn't get, quite get him. I think it's because that Shen ult came in as well. That Shen ult really saved him there. Damn, I suck. That's one issue with Jin, though, that allows for some counterplay, because he's clearly very, very strong. Very, very fun as well. I love this champion. But at the same time, he's very, very, very bad when he gets against fighters and assassins. Anybody can get on top of him, because he's, he's got a speed buff when he gets that fourth shot off, right? But, I mean, how often does that really happen? every four shots and how good is your attack speed not great so it takes some time and assassins are all about speed right and triple kill coming for a collie I and mean, that's a good example an assassin getting three kills simultaneously very quickly or not simultaneously but in quick succession right i mean that's a perfect example of what i'm talking about so assassins are all about so i'm um, actually hold on here can i get any components no i cannot let's just do this and i'll get potions as well so we have the rapid fire cannon now so again same stats there extra move speed as well and the energized attack is gonna be great for us I think I like it a lot with Jin because he already has great wave kill with his uh, dancing grenade and his deadly flourish. But uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Right, so that's kind of a counterplay opportunity for uh, anybody playing against this champion is play an assassin, play a fighter. If you see him picked up in draft modes, play somebody who can get on top of him and just stick to him because his E can be used to slow and he can use his uh, fourth shot to get a speed off or a regular crit if he does get it lucky enough like I just did there. But otherwise, I mean, he doesn't really have much to get away from a bad situation. So that's something you can use to your advantage. And of course his ultimate's going to be no good at all in a close situation like that. Whereas like someone like Jinx's ult, I mean she's known for her snipes. But up close, her ult can still go off and do a heap of damage, right? Whereas with Jin, it takes some time. Not to mention, you're pretty much stationary. You can't move. It's a channel, right? You can, and you only have such a uh, field of view. You can't see everything behind you and all that. I mean, technically you can, but you can't shoot there. So how good's that? So point being here, there are some ways to counterplay this guy as long as you get on top of him. But if, you keep, if he keeps his distance and kites you out, which is very difficult to do, by the way, but if he can do it, you're going to be in a bad spot. So make sure to work a way around that. And it looks like my team's pressuring mid here. I'm just going to continue pressuring bottom lane because, I mean, it looks like they don't need us mid. Not to mention, I just enjoy split pushing for the time being. And it's looking like a guy's going to pick up another kill. Holy crap, she got 12 kills. That's insane. I only got 8 myself, but you want 8 still fine. It's fine. I'm just really hoping this guy doesn't become a 20 minute on the dot surrender, because that's no fun. I mean, it's still fun, but it's <laughs> it's a lot less fun in comparison to a game that takes a little bit more time. But you want, that's the PB. In the PB, people don't really give a shit. Once they get ahead, they take the game, they roll with it. When people get behind, they get salty, and they just stop trying, really. That tends to be my experience, at least, from what I see a lot of players doing. So let's go out here and head over to uh, the mid lane. But uh, coming back to that topic, though, about the whole 200k special thing, which I am still planning on doing, by the way, make sure that's very, very clear, is that, I mean, the new Wukong skin's not on live servers yet. I want to make sure that video is done on live servers. I don't think the quality of gameplay on the PB quite lives up to the quality I want to bring to that special video, right? So I'm waiting for that skin to come onto the live, and it should be soon. It should be. Who knows how soon it really will be coming out, though. It looks like Kali was going pretty ham. Got knocked away, though. Is she going to go ham again? Man, this guy's crazy. Alright, I'll just help from here. How's that sound? I don't really want to stand turret trains, though. But I did some decent damage to help out. Is he going to finish off the Chen? No, he's not. Alright, looks like our team's going a little bit too ham. Alright, he's going to get out. Nice. Place a trap here. Alright, well, Shen should die pretty soon here. 
Okay, there's one kill. I just want to keep my distance from Yasuo for the time being. And can I hit Shen? Oh, not quite. It's gonna. F oh, hold on. Heal. Flash. Can I get away from this guy? I can't. All right, cool. I I kind of saw his ult coming in. And I was I knew he was gonna try that, and I was thinking that I could flash when he used the animation for the tornado from the uh, Q. But instead, he did it with his E, which I took me off guard. Which I don't know why, because I should have expected that. So my mistake there for sure. It cost me my summoners, but we're regening pretty decently here, so it's okay. Yeah, definitely have some work to do with this champion. I'm not very good at him, but I like his style a lot. His entire theme and the place down his abilities, I find them really fun. So I do really like this champion. I'm glad they had added him to the league. And wow, that was a big crit. Whoopsies, didn't mean to take that from Fizz. Sorry, fat crit. And is there someone in the brush? No, there's not. All right, use our bouncing bomb to clear. Or a bouncing grenade, actually, not bouncing bomb. That's Ziggs to clear up these waves. Oops, I think I missed the siege. I did miss the siege. That's unfortunate. This Shen is very squishy, though. He went with the damage build for some reason. We got Rang on the side as well. You got, let's place this here. Place this over here. I should definitely be using these more. Especially considering I have Essence Reaver and a blue buff. I have so much mana available to me that I need to be spamming these. The problem is, for me at least, is that I just don't remember to. I'm so focused on other parts of this kit that, of course, are much more uh, higher impact, I'd say. And whoopsies. I thought my auto attack went off there. I was trying to do that, that trick where you get them low and then use your... Uh, Bouncing grenade to finish him off. Like this. There we go. And it didn't quite work out. Looks like my team picked up the ace though. And yeah, they are going to surrender right here on the dot. So hopefully you guys like this. It was a bit of a shorter gameplay. But you know what? That's the PB. That's what you guys should expect. When this champion hits live servers, I will be replaying him with the skin. And probably in a game that's much more, I guess, serious. And much more uh, evenly mashed. Because yeah, this was a little bit crazy. So hopefully you guys liked it nonetheless though. Some early footage of the new champion. If you did like it, make sure to drop that rating on the video. Helps out a lot. And stay tuned for the 200k special. It will be soon. I want to talk about it a bit more, like what was going on with that. But I, pretty much what it comes down to is there's no Wukong skin yet. Once it's on live servers, there will be a video day of, if not day after. So that's all you guys need to worry about. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.